The third ordinary session of the 2020 legislative year at the National Assembly and the Senate is a heartbeat away. The elected representatives ready to address national issues will meet at the refurbished conference center in Yaoundé. Two lawyers get into a heated confrontation at the court of first intents in Douala over allegations that attempts were made to corrupt the judge on the ruling the legal wahala and its counters in this newscast. Only 7,000 out of 30,000 enterprises in Cameroon burge to pay the social security dues of their employees. The National Social Insurance Fund denounces the content which disfavors workers. Good evening and thanks for joining us. Those were the headlines of the 7.30 News. Each of us must comply with the measures that have been taken. Welcome back. A group of American investors representing multiple companies are in Cameroon to explore ways to foster business ties between Cameroon and the United States of America. At an audience granted them by Prime Minister Joseph John Gute today, Professor Edwin Freeman, the Chief Executive Officer of Hoofin International Consortium, unveiled their intention. They will be investing in the agricultural, real estate development and air transport sectors. Christian Chiatem reports from the Star Building. The delegation of U.S. business tycoons is in search of new grounds for the multiple U.S. companies it represents to expand their activities. The audience which Prime Minister Joseph John Guti granted the delegation was therefore an initial contact with the government of Cameroon. The goal of this visit is to meet with the Prime Minister other ministries within Cameroon and companies and individuals to discuss how the U.S. companies and Cameroon can work together to help increase exports to Cameroon, to help internal development within Cameroon. The delegation represents the interest of U.S. businesses spread across 94 countries on six continents, covering fields as diverse as agriculture, air transport, seaport exploitation, real estate development and hotel development amongst others. From what we've seen, Cameroon is a very beautiful nation that has tremendous potential that is being developed right now. And by working with the U.S. partners, we believe that can be accelerated and greater heights can be obtained. Prime Minister Joseph John Gute has reassured the U.S. business representatives that Cameroon is a business-friendly environment open to foreign investors. The third ordinary session of parliaments for the 2020 legislative year opens tomorrow, but the speakers of the National Assembly and the Senate expected to present keynote addresses on the state of the nation. Ahead of the session, which will be largely dedicated to the 2021 state budget, the Conference Center of Yaoundé, which will host the 30 days of legislation, is receiving a first lift. Emmanuel Avermue reports on the level of preparedness. A quick glance at the exterior of the National Assembly gives the feel of an ordinary day, but not a into the lobby. The red carpet being rolled and vacuumed announces the solemnity of the event that will be hosted. The third ordinary session of the 2020 legislative year at the Senate is just a heartbeat away and technicians are ensuring that the House chamber, which will accommodate the 100 senators, is set. The sound system is brought to perfection and the translation kits lie in wait for use, while seats to serve the public are transported. At the entrance to the relocation House Chamber of the National Assembly, the COVID-19 screen box is a must for all, as the virus must be kept at bay. While security officers work on the latch, the lobby is cleared of unwanted items and the committee rooms already with occupants are disinfected and seating arrangements respecting physical distancing. This, as the House Chamber with the elected representatives already meeting, look forward to tomorrow's opening. 
Although the third ordinary session will have the elected representatives examine the budgetary outline of the state and scrutinize growth policies, other issues will likely be discussed. They include the consolidation of peace, the resolution of the crisis in the northwest and southwest regions, as well as government's report strategy against the coronavirus. Charles Anyangwe spoke to some senators and members of the National Assembly in this report. The expectations of members of the upper and lower houses of parliament are very high as they begin meeting at the Yaoundé Conference Centre this Thursday for the last ordinary session of parliament for 2020 dedicated to the voting on the Finance Bill of Cameroon for 2021. We are hoping that this budget will be realistic. It will meet up with the expectations of the people and that it will be a fast track for the decentralization process. This session is very, very important and for the future, for the putting in place the real decentralization has the president hope. Top among the issues that members of parliament expect to see in the budget are allocations for some of the burning issues brought forward from the year 2020. Like uh, the fight against Corona, the fight uh, against uh, insecurity and the crisis in the northwest and southwest. So we, we are expecting that uh, the 2021 budget is going to tackle these uh, problems and we're going to come out with uh, ample solutions given that decentralization has to be speedily implemented. The lawmakers will be expected to scrupulously examine all the dossiers that will be tabled before them and put questions to members of government on some key issues concerning their ministerial In one of our top stories, a case concerning two lawyers at the court of first instance in Douala, Bonanjo, which took place yesterday, has left onlookers perplexed after Iskandalo's outcome. The confrontation has been blamed on attempts to corrupt a judge on an impending petition. Alphonse Abongwa Aju sought to know more from the officials of the judicial police and now reports. A court session sanctioned by tension and tear gas. Lawyers in Douala turned up to the Bonanjo Court of First Instance in solidarity with two of their colleagues drawn to court because of professional error. In fact, they wanted the judge to free them or at least pass judgment for their case immediately. The two lawyers in question, Wangtung Geko Augustin and Mesuk Junko Ani Christel, reportedly collected the sum of 3 million CFA francs from their client, a certain Nubom. The money had to play the trick in the final judgment of their case. Only that at the end, last November 2, the judge of the case, Nathalie Adjui, slammed an 18-year prison term to the accused instead of 18 months. On Thursday, November 5, a relative of the accused, a certain Wanan, came to claim the money from the judge only to be referred back to those with whom they had carried out their transaction. The judicial police in Douala was then dragged in to investigate the matter. The lawyers then appeared to court for their first hearing Tuesday, November 11, only for the case to be adjourned to November 25. What a scandal in the judicial sector. On to one of our top stories, the non-payment of social insurance dues by a couple of enterprises in the country to the detriment of their workers has been strongly decried by officials of the National Social Insurance Fund. So far, only 3,000 local enterprises have ensured their employees a figure considered unacceptable by the fund's Director General, Noel Alain Olivier Mekulovonde. Luma Slim Davies has the details. Social security package is important for workers' welfare during retirement. Unfortunately, many enterprises are defiant in making payments on behalf of their employees in this regard to the National Social Insurance Fund. It is a recurrent problem, but it is a fault of CNPS. The law gives the right to CNPS to go after enterprises that do not pay these funds into the coffers of CNPS. CNPS can block the account of these default enterprises. Some of these as enterprises are their friends, they do nothing. The situation today is deplorable with just one quarter of enterprises paying these retirement dues. Out of 30,000 enterprises, only 7,000 are in order with the payments. 15% of enterprises 
with 6 to 20 salaried workers are defiant, while 81 percent of enterprises with at least six salaried workers also stand accused. A strict adjustment or regulatory mechanism is needed to put things in order. It is thus imperative that awareness to the importance of recovering social security dues is intensified throughout the national territory for both employers and employees. E-economies explain that a number of mechanisms must be put in place to guarantee effectiveness, amongst them the payments of subventions. Clarice Aritakan tells us more. Recovering social security dues is crucial, officials of the National Social Insurance Fund insist. The fact that many workers are cheated out of their social benefits is worrisome. Reason why? Economists propose investing in growth drivers as one of the solutions. Building more companies they hold will enable the state better guarantee that enterprises honor their obligations to workers. Policies which incite the payment of taxes have equally been suggested. Fiscal exemptions or exonerations could be a profitable stimulant for the recovery of social contributions and arrears. Other views hold that subventions should be granted to businesses in strategic domains of activity, including those of the private sector. Meanwhile, officials charged with collecting social dues explain that there is equally the possibility of granting moratorium to enterprises to enable them clear their debts. Furthermore, trade unionists have been tasked with putting up a common front in order to better defend the rights of workers, capacity building and good governance put forward in order to avoid a situation where some practices put managers in a spot which exposes them to the cold hands of the law. The 7.30 news tonight delves into the bird flu, whose outbreak has been announced in Europe. Cameroonians remember the devastating effects of the spread in 2017, where hundreds of birds on poultry farms were destroyed. The Minister of Livestock, Fisheries and Animal Industries, Dr. Tiger, has announced the reinforcement of preventive measures in the country. Ewane Epole investigates. The World Health Organization, WHO, has published a report on the outbreak of the bird flu in some European countries. It is in this regard that the Cameroon Minister of Livestock, Fisheries and Animal Industries, Dr. Tiger, published a service note on preventive measures put in place. Francois Jongno, president of the poultry sector in Cameroon, also spoke on the situation. Measures being taken include the ban of poultry imports from neighboring countries and France where Cameroon imports most of its agricultural products and the reinforcement of custom surveillance on Cameroon borders. We have received messages in our WhatsApp group and we are at alert. We hope government has taken measures to avoid the bed flow to reach Cameroon. It's worth noting that in 2017, Cameroon witnessed an episodic of bed flu with hundreds of poultry decimated in the West region, Adamawa and the Center region, incurring an estimated loss of over 16 billion CV francs. In economic news, senior officials and experts from Central Africa have been seeking practical routes to enhance development and the sub-region's economic activity. This was at the 36th session of the Intergovernmental Committee organized by the United Nations Economic Commission for Africa. Caroline Okier anoma has the details. Structural and industrial transformation is primordial if Central Africa has to move away from unsustainable growth with minimal impact on job creation and poverty alleviation. Therefore, Central African countries need to swiftly reform their current educational systems by emphasizing on upgrading training in science, technology, engineering, mathematics, and innovation. This will improve the quality and workforce to deliver the goods for economic diversification on the marketplace. The virtual conference that is ongoing will advert experts the opportunity to emphasize the need for Central African countries to capitalize on the African continental free trade area to immediately change the productivity system through tech-based and digital enhanced manufacturing knowledge production and high-end services which is tantamount to a vibrant regional value chain for each country. 
away from the economy, clarifications on international labor laws ratified by Cameroon have been given to representatives of employers, employees and trade unions today. The forum was a workshop organized by the Ministry of Labor and Social Security in partnership with the International Labor Organization. Cynthia Saptala reports that the impact of the coronavirus in the labor industry was also discussed. Apart from popularizing some of the conventions and recommendations agreed upon by Cameroon, the workshop in Yaoundé also provided those concerned with regulating the workplace the scope of their obligations to the ILO, one of which is to submit adopted instruments to competent authorities. Cameroon has been commended for its efforts to submit to its uh, legislative authorities uh, three instruments of recent adoption, including Convention and Recommendation on Violence and Harassment in the World of Work. And what has been said and agreed by the uh, Tripartite Working Group of the Standard Review Mechanism, they're talking about instruments that date back all the way to 1919, the world has changed. With a world characterized by a pandemic, the effects on employers and employees has prompted a review of the instruments. Over 170 youth and associations in the East region have received funds from the three-year special youth plan that will boost their activities. At an event in Bombang, the Minister of Youth Affairs and Civic Education, Mununa Futsu, cautioned the beneficiaries to use the financial assistance and the kids to empower themselves and to reduce poverty in their communities. Tala LT tells us more from the East. Beneficiaries of the three-year special youth plan promising to be diligent in the management of the checks and startup kits handed to them. Drawn from 13 Pawnee villages and clusters, the youth who have been armed with the necessary skills and tools to create employment for themselves and others say they are ready to fully execute their project. Before, we just use our proper means and now today we have supplementation of government. While handing over these checks and equipment to the beneficiaries in Abongbang, Minister Mununa Futsu said, I ask to those who have received uh, their uh, support to uh, be uh, more engaged and determined in the implementation of their project. In the presence of dignitaries like Governor Gregoire Vongo and Minister Joseph Lee, moral, civic and entrepreneurial rearmament kits like motorbikes, generators and sound gadgets were handed to workers of the decentralized services of the ministry to enable them better follow up in education, the 2020-2021 academic year at the Yaoundé Institute of the Catholic University of Central Africa has begun. Today's solemn reopening, whose inaugural lesson centered on the teaching of law and political science within African universities, was presided at by the Metropolitan Archbishop of Yaoundé and Chancellor of the Institute, His Grace Jean Balga. Yoti Khaled Songa pens a vivid picture of the ceremony. Prayerfully, the confide to the 2020-2021 academic year to God Almighty. The Yaoundé Institute of the Catholic University of Central Africa reopens in style. On the Ekunwayene campus recites a new faculty, that of law and political science. We want to build a new kind of jurist a personality of law and politician. In the, the new kind of devolution of power, we need a kind of special person to, to, to take care of th those institutions which are created. More important is the holistic development of the students. This university wants to improve all the integrity of the man, all the integrality of the people, so that we can join the science and the conscience. With a student population of over 5,000, the Catholic Institute of Yaoundé is poised to train people who will be at the service of truth and justice. The wearing of face masks in public places will be mandatory until further notice.
The regular washing of hands is one of the several measures outlined by the World Health Organization to limit the spread of the coronavirus. The gesture health officials emphasize must be accompanied by the use of soap to avoid any possibilities of the virus to survive. Baldwin Sama and his guest, Dr. Joseph Fulcom, talk on how the neglected hygiene rule can cause havoc in society. Hello, Baldwin. Good evening to you, Esther Kima. It remains one of those uh, outlined measures to limit the spread of uh, the coronavirus the world over, the regular washing of our uh, hands. And uh, tonight we discuss with our guest, Dr. Joseph Fokam, how important is uh, the washing of hands as far as uh, uh, fighting against the coronavirus is concerned. Good evening to you, Dr. Joseph Fokam. Good evening, Baden. Tell us uh, how important is uh, the regular washing of hands in this ongoing fight against the coronavirus is concerned. Concerned. Absolutely. As simple as the act of washing hands may be, hand washing remains the very best option to prevent the spread of coronavirus. It is the best, the, the, the most easy, and the most natural. But however, hand washing is not just the act of using water. You must make sure you use a generous amount of soap on your hand because soap is going to help dissolve this envelope virus and making sure your hands at the end of it is quite pure in terms of transmitting the virus. And also, if you don't have a available, maybe you are in your office, you are, in, you are, you are within the community, you can use an alcohol-based hand sanitizer as a second option, option. But we should always remember washing your hands with soap for about 10 seconds only is preferable even as compared to a normal hand sanitizer. So the act of washing hands is what we should also encourage create in every single Cameroonian such that the spread of coronavirus through this simple act will be highly effective in our context. Thank you so much, Dr. Joseph Fokam, for being a guest this evening. We should continue washing our hands regularly using soap so as, uh, we, so as to avoid any possibility of getting infected with the coronavirus. Back to you, Esther Kima. Thanks, Baldwin. We should use soap and also it's important to emphasize that the water is preferably to be running water. The search for a vaccine for the coronavirus is intensifying and some candidates have begun announcing positive results for their late stage findings. The World Health Organization had teed on a few promising cases by the end of the year and this Monday an American company said it will deliver a vaccine soon. How concrete is this claim for a COVID-19 vaccine? Beatrice Losamba provides answers. The world had been expecting a vaccine for COVID-19 within a year. The vaccine timeline seems to have been respected as the American company Pfizer Monday announced positive results from a late-stage vaccine trial. The vaccine maker claims its candidate is more than 90% effective in preventing the disease. The development makes Pfizer the first company to announce positive results in this global hunt which began in January. The WHO has described Pfizer's work as promising, though the approval process still needs to be streamlined by health regulators. The special challenge of storing this vaccine at minus 70 degrees Celsius or below makes it less likely to be delivered in Africa and Asia where the climate is warm. Hope is still alive, however, in tens of promising vaccine candidates working against the clock as the world waits anxiously for any positive news about a pandemic that has killed more than 1.2 million people in the globe and nearly 450 in Cameroon. President Paul Beer says global action is needed to face challenges like the coronavirus pandemic. This was at the third edition of the Paris Peace Forum, which began today. The president's statement was delivered by the Minister of External Relations, His Excellency Mbila Mbila. It was also occasion for Cameroon to outline measures taken to combat COVID-19. He underscored that the outbreak of the pandemic gives room for a rethink on how to check terrorism, climate change and economic hardship. And now on to sports. The indomitable Lions of Cameroon have had their third training session today ahead of tomorrow's march against Mozambique. Apart from all the players who were there, Maxim Chopimoting will not be part of the game tomorrow as we hear this report by Jules Ndemba. 
22 players took part in the third training session of the Indomitable Lions of Cameroon at the newly renovated Reunification Stadium in Douala. Kerl Toko Ekambi, Harold Mukudi, Hervé Gomo and Félix Ukine of Coton Sport of Garoua are the latest to join the team. Tomorrow's game will take place without Eric Maxim Choupo-Moting injured. The team captain has been replaced by Jérôme Ongene. Never without his musical set, Oyongo Bitolo and teammates are determined to grasp the three points of the encounter against Mozambique. Despite the tight security and the COVID-19 preventive measures, the fans of the Lions are never too far. Zero, two, zero, three, zero. The Lions won't gain. All the Lions are not top. Gano Piketela. Cameroon tops the group with four points, equal number with the Mozambicans. The match will be played on Thursday. The third ordinary session of the 2020 legislative year at the National and at the Senate begins tomorrow. The elected representatives ready to address national issues will meet at a refurbished conference centre in Yaoundé. Tonight on the 7th of the news, you had details of the preparations as well as the stakes and the expectations of the elected representatives. More news comes up at 8.30pm with Adel Mbala. Our programmes continue on the CRTV. Thanks for being with us. It was our pleasure serving you tomorrow is another day I'll be back at 7 30 p.m. God willing, good night. In this connection, we should avoid stigmatizing. Il avait la... CRTV News, ici, toute l'info.